Hello YouTube, I'm Andrew Does Hair. You can find my work on Instagram at Andrew Does Hair. In this video, I wanna share five opinions about how you can pretty much instantly ruin a haircut. And I want you to keep in mind, I just used the word opinions. You're gonna watch some of this and go, well, that's just like your opinion, man. Yes. Yes, this is, this is just opinions. If you disagree with anything that I say here, go find somebody to cut your hair who agrees with you. So, but this list of five ways to almost instantly ruin a haircut is kind of based on over the years when people come in for a haircut and they go, man, I got a really bad haircut, I need you to fix it. It's always one or more of these five things that occurred that makes the client go, oh crap, I got a bad haircut. So number one is pushing back the hairline. Now, a pushback is kind of an interesting thing because everybody defines it differently. Essentially, it's when you take the hairline while you're lining it up and you take it too far into where the natural hairline is. Here's the interesting thing about it is some people will always push the hairline a little bit back from what is natural because the further into the hairline you go while you're creating a line there, the bolder and crisper and more contrasty that edge can look. And so to some people, you have to go a little bit in to get that crispy, clean look. And then there are people out there who think putting any kind of line on it at all essentially might as well be a pushback. So the thing about a pushback is it's all about how you feel about the way it looks. I've seen people cutting, you know, two millimeters into the hairline and the client's perfectly stoked with it. And I've, I've seen people, if you cut anything off at all, they're like, dude, you pushed me back. But cutting further into the hairline than necessary, depending on the outcome, the look you're going for, that's a way to instantly ruin a haircut. You can get a great haircut in all, every other aspect. And if, the, if this line is a millimeter too far into your hairline, you're gonna feel like an idiot for two weeks. The second way to ruin a haircut is to cut the crown off. So the crown is like this region back here where you kind of have whorls and cowlick. A lot of people will kind of deal with hair sticking out there like I have here. A lot of people will deal with that by just cutting it off and cutting it short. So traditionally, you would take a haircut and give it a shape something like this, almost parallel to the floor, maybe slightly higher in the front. And then this length here would be echoed over here and then blended into the bottom. So essentially with this more traditionally shaped haircut here, you have a lot of length in that crown area. And this adds corners to the head. It's, it's when your haircut kind of has that square look to it. So oftentimes when people cut off the crown, they remove the crown, you'll end up with a haircut that rather than having weight in order to allow the hair to bend and lay down there, because you see, let me take a second here. When you have a cowlick and it's sticking out, the way to make that lay down is to grow it longer because the longer your hair is, the more flexible it is, just like any material. If, if I have a, a six inch steel rod, it's like rigid, I can't bend it. But if that same rod's six feet long, it's wobbly and I can kind of bend it. Same thing with your hair. And so really that's why you don't want to cut off your crown. But if you were to cut off the crown, a lot of times we see haircuts that end up being shaped kind of more like this. And when you do that, Maybe the hair's sticking out to a nice clean shape today, but in a week, in two weeks, you're gonna have a problem that grows right back. It's, it's basically taking a problem and putting it a week into the future instead of solving it long-term. Now, there are cases where you do want to fade up and over and tight over the crown like that. If you're doing a high fade, like a military type fade, that sort of thing, yes, of course you wanna take a high fade high, uh, but I see a lot of cases where somebody's doing like a mid fade, and so they got their fade like, like here's where they're fading. And then instead of building this, this hair out here, building up the crown, they chop it right off. And that is one way to instantly ruin a haircut. The third way you can ruin a haircut is by texturizing without purpose or intention. I was initially gonna say texturizing too much, but that's kind of like, a, I, I could literally say anything too much. Like you could ruin a haircut by product too much. You could ruin a haircut by long too much, by short too much. And so I, I didn't wanna use the word too much, but texturizing without purpose. And let me break that down here. When you texturize hair, you're effectively changing the way that it acts on a small level. And so if I have all these hairs that are cut to the exact same length, they're all gonna bend and move exactly the same because they're all the same length. And as we just discussed, the longer hair is, the more flexible it is. So if I have hair that's all the same length, it's all gonna act the same. And that's when you get a wall of hair that looks boring. So when you texturize hair, if I were to, for example, hang on, I need more density to do this. If I were to take this haircut and texturize it like this, longer to shorter, longer to shorter.
This is harder to do with a marker than it is with a pair of scissors. If I cut these notches short to long like that, then these shorter hairs are gonna be much more rigid than the longer hairs in front of them. Meaning when I go to push this hair back, these shorter hairs are gonna pop up the longer hairs. The longer hairs are responsible for the shape of the haircut, but the shorter hairs being more rigid will wanna pop them up. And so if you want like a big, loose, messy pomp, you would texturize it that way. If I had that same wall of evenly cut hair that had no texture, and I took a pair of texturizing scissors and just started taking pieces and chunks out of it, I would do something like this. Looking at this shape, there's no pattern, there's no rhythm there. What's the hair going to do when it's pushed? It's gonna be chaos. What tends to happen if you start bashing into the hair like this with no structure to your texture, internal structure is one word they might use. If you're just bashing away, and I'm stealing that from the pissed off barber, bash it with the thinners. If you're just taking the thinners and you're bashing the haircut, all those little hairs are gonna wanna stick out and do crazy things then there's no control to it. And so I get a lot of clients that come in and they're like, my hair's all big and poofy and frizzy. Can you thin it out more? My last guy used to like thin it with the, the scissors for me and it's still just being poofy and crazy. It's because you got all these little hairs that have no direction and no purpose that are sticking out and pushing all the rest of your hair out. The fourth way to ruin a haircut is to disregard the natural growth. Now, let me point out that I didn't say go against the natural growth. You can totally do that, but you have to know when and how to do it. If you just completely disregard the natural growth patterns, that's when hair sticks out. That's when hair can't be controlled. There is a lot of testing involved while you're styling somebody's hair to see what it can and can't do. So for example, if the hair on this head kind of grew forward and a little bit outward to this left side, right? So that would be like this way. If the hair is growing this way and it's that long, it's very easily gonna lay that way, but it's not easily gonna lay this way. So with the wet hair, you can take it and kind of push it the wrong way and see if it'll go there. Now there are cases where if the hair's long enough and you test it and everything and it works, you can absolutely go against the natural growth. If you got this like long haircut coming out this way and it grows this way, a lot of times pushing it against the natural growth is a great way to get a ton more volume in the front. But I get some clients that come in and I'm not trying to hate on my clients here. They go, I want a zero, do a one, do a two. I want to part it like here. And I'm like, well, hold on, hold on. You don't tell your hair where it parts. Your hair tells you where it parts. And so if it grows this way and you decide like, you know what, I'm gonna shave a line right there and now we're gonna part it there. It may work, it may not work. I'm not saying don't go against the natural growth. I'm saying don't disregard it. Don't just try to part it the wrong way even if it's not gonna work. That will be an instant bad haircut. You get it wet, comb it where you want it to go. And if water alone can do it for 30 seconds, like if it'll sit in place for 30 seconds with just water, you can style it that way. If you go to comb it that way with just water, and it will not go that way, you can't do it. No amount of styling, no amount of product or anything will make that work for you. And the fifth way, fifth, the fifth way to ruin a haircut is to make it not suitable. All these things I mentioned here, they might work for somebody. They might not work for somebody. And at the end of the day, every client is an individual and they have their own tastes and their own style and their own opinions and their own message they wanna put out to the world based on the way that they look and getting that wrong is a bad haircut. It doesn't matter if it's a technically flawless haircut, if it's sitting on a person that it doesn't look right on, who doesn't feel right under it, that is a bad haircut every single time. There's more to what we do than understanding lines on a chart here and angles on the head and stuff. We need to understand people, we need to understand culture, we need to understand, I hate fashion, but we need to understand fashion. We need to understand why people like, People might come in and go, oh, I want a two and an inch off the top. Dig deeper, why do they want that? What do they want the hair to say about them? You get that right, it's a good haircut. You get that wrong, it's a bad haircut. Even if you cut a perfect inch off and did a perfect two on the sides, if it's not matching the person's vibe, if it's not suitable to them, it's not a good haircut. Anyways, I apologize for the abrupt ending, but thanks for watching.